এটি মানবজাতির প্রতি আহ্বান দয়া এবং জ্ঞানের ঝর্ণাধারা বিপদগামীদের পথ প্রদর্শক অসচেতনের প্রতি সতর্ক যারা সন্ধিহান তাদের জন্য নিশ্চয়তা দুঃখীদের জন্য সমাধান যারা হতাশ তাদের জন্য আশা আল কোরআন এই পৃথিবীর বুকে সবচেয়ে পজিটিভ বই আল্লাহর পক্ষ হতে মানুষের প্রতি চূড়ান্ত বার্তা চলুন এটা পড়ি বুঝি এবং অনুসরণ করি Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good evening. Welcome to Witness with Wahid again and greetings to all of you. May God bless you and make your evening as good as it is. I have with me somebody that I personally have been long into meet for a very very long time and I'm sure you have been as well. A man who needs no introduction whatsoever. Therefore as usual I will not introduce to introduce the gentleman to you. because that will be like the traditional saying of sailing date to Basra so without further ado allow me to present to you my greatest uh, respected i call him my teacher my brother dr zakir naik welcome to the maldives a 100% muslim country in the middle of the indian ocean and now that you know that and uh, also welcome to tv maldives but more so welcome to the hearts of the population of the maldives i must say this to you Alhamdulillah, it's my pleasure to be in Maldi. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam. And we all know that you're a famous da'i. And, and we respect you for that and we love you for that. But I also know that you're a medical doctor. Why did you leave the profession, the, the very um, lucrative profession of a medical doctor? Why did you leave that aside and choose the profession, if I can use that word, of being a da'i? Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahibi ajmeen amma baad. The reason that I chose to be a medical doctor initially was because I thought it was the best profession to serve humanity. And alhamdulillah, a medical doctor is a good profession. But when I found a better profession, as Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Fusilat, chapter 41, verse number 33, وَمَنْ أَحْسُنُ قَالَ مِنْ مَنْ دَوِلَ اللَّهِ وَعَمِلُ صَلِحَوْا وَعَمِلُ صَلِحَوْا إِنَّ نِمْنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Who is better in speech than one who invites the people towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? and works righteousness and says that I'm a Muslim. So when I found a better profession, I changed from a doctor of a body to a doctor of a soul. So when I found that, you know, when I used to treat the patient who are sick in body, I used to get pleasure. But when I found that treating a patient's faith and iman and getting him closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, I got multiple times more pleasure and that's a greater reward than treating the body. That is the reason I changed from a doctor of a body to a doctor of a soul. Does the human being need a lot when it comes to the soul? Yes, of course, alhamdulillah. If you really want to know the purpose of life, the real peace, the real pleasure of life can only be attained if you find peace in soul. And so, that is the reason Islam comes from the root word salam, which means peace. You can have any amount of wealth, but still have a lot of darkness in your soul and, and your life would be hell on earth. Is it's that what you're like saying? Wealth is not what can get you pleasure. People have a misconception that a person who's wealthy, he may be the happiest man in the world. To a certain extent, you can get certain luxury. But the peace of mind and peace of soul cannot be bought with wealth. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. This is so nice. Now, when you say it, that you, you found this to be a better profession, are you saying that this is an area that all of us should look at. Yes, in fact, it's compulsory for every Muslim 
That would be my next question, in fact. Is da'wah an obligation? Yes, it's compulsory for every Muslim. He should do da'wah. According to the verse of the Quran of Surah Al-Asr, chapter number 103, verse number one to three, it gives the criteria for a person to enter Jannah. It says, well, asr. That by the token of time, man is verily in a state of loss. Except those who have faith, those who have righteous deeds, those who exhort people to truth, that is to dawah, and those who exhort people to patience and perseverance. For any human being to go to Jannah, minimum four criteria are required. That's Iman, righteous deed, exhorting people to truth, that is dawah, exhorting people to patience and perseverance. If any one out of these four are missing, under normal circumstances, that human being can't go to paradise. Ah, only praying, only zakat, only hajj will not take you to paradise. All four are equally important, iman, righteous deed, dawah, and exhorting people to patience and perseverance. If any one is missing, under normal circumstances, the person can't go to Jannah. If Allah wants to forgive you and put you in Jannah, that is different. But under normal circumstances, all four are equally important for going to Jannah. I see. I also have here Surah An nisa verse 125, do you recall that? Yes. Yes. Am, am, I, am I right? I mean, I'm, I'm not very educated in this area. Um, it goes like, invite to the way of your Lord with wisdom and fair preaching and argue with them in a way that is better. That's the verse of the Quran from Surah Nahl, chapter number 16, verse 125. I see, okay. Surah so, Nisa 124, something else, I thought you were referring to that. Oh, um, but this, what, is, what, this is Surah Nahl. I see. Chapter 16. Nisa 125, what is that? Nisa 124, 125 says that if any of the human being, be it a male or a female, do good deeds, they shall go to Jannah. I see. Okay. 124, and then goes one. Oh, that's, that's the going to Jannah bit. Yes, I, I got mixed up there. So sorry about that. But as I keep saying, you're my teacher. Please educate me. No, no, no. <laughs> you're all brothers, mashallah. Uh, so, um, I consider myself to be a student of comparative religion. Oh, well, thank you so much. For people like me, and for people like uh, in, our, in our audience, who, is, is there somebody who should not practice dawah? In fact, it's compulsory for every Muslim to do dawah. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, it's Hadith of Sayyid Bukhari, that balli go anni wala ayah. Propagate even if you know one verse. Even if you know one verse about Islam, it's your duty you should convey to those who are not aware of it. You don't have to become a great scholar or wait till you become like Sheikh Ahmad Dida and then start propagating. Whatever you know, as long as you know it correctly. If so you know I, do, I, don't, I don't have to become as knowledgeable as Brother Zakir Naik to go out there. I don't there. consider myself to be knowledgeable. Oh, <laughs> I don't opinion, consider myself to be knowledgeable. Opinion differs on that one between you and I. <laughs> um, so that means I, I, can, I can also go out yes, but and... Whatever you know well, I as see, long okay. as you know that thing. For example, every Muslim knows there's one God. There's one yes. last God. At least convey that message. Okay. You may not be that well-versed or that efficient. Whatever Allah has given you the capacity. It's your duty to convey to those who are not aware of it. So, what, what you're saying here is, if I'm not sure about something, then I should not spread it. Yes, that if you're not sure of it, of course not. But every Muslim is at least sure of a few things. Yes. At least know there's one God, at least know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi is the final messenger. At least start with that. Okay. And the moment you start doing dawah, Allah gives you more knowledge, and mashallah, then you continue. But then wouldn't there be the general opinion that if I go out there and tell someone that, look here, this is what I believe, it is the right way, mm -hmm. and this is what I know about Islam. And uh, wouldn't there be the possibility of people telling me that, look here, what do you know? You aren't qualified. Fine. How do you deal with so, that? So, see, for example, myself. In terms of qualification, I'm a medical doctor. Yes. I have not passed from any Darul room. You have not? Not passed from any Darul room. I'm not Hafizul Quran. It is just, I've said at home, I was inspired by Sheikh Ahmed Didar. Yes. Who himself has not been attached to any Darul room. Fine, so now getting in the field of dawah, but whatever I say, I give reference from the Quran and say hadith. If you go back at the time of the Sahabas, the Sahabas did not go to Islamic schools. They learned from meeting people of knowledge. And as you keep on gaining, whatever you gain, if you spread, Allah gives you more. But it's the duty, what you are speaking, you should know what you're speaking, that's important. And every Muslim knows the basics of Islam. Brother Zakir, are you saying that when you started, you are an absolute, total layman with no Islamic scholar background. And even now I'm a layman. Oh, I see. <laughs> now also I consider myself to be a layman. That is called humility, sir. <laughs> Actually, I was inspired by Sheikh Ahmed Didar. Yes. And when I saw Sheikh Ahmed Didar speaking, I started repeating what I heard from him. And I saw that people started appreciating and coming closer to Islam. So that's how being inspired by him when I was in the second year of my medical college. Yes. He changed my life from a doctor of a body to a doctor of soul. 
and Sheikh Ahmed Didad himself, he did not go to any Islamic school per se. He mainly read books and he got a new field, a new dimension of Dawah, especially in Christianity. I went a step further, he told me, son, you should study other religions. So besides Christianity, Judaism and Islam, I studied Buddhism, Hinduism, Jainism and that's how, mashallah. So a message that you would be giving to the young people of this country would be, look here guys, you have souls, feed those souls, so let these souls grow, find inner peace correct. and then spread the message amongst yourselves so that life becomes more meaningful. Correct. चादर पोते चला जाए ना इहदिन अस्सरात अल मुस्तकीम तारा करा प्रति रकात सलाते तो तादर को थाई पोर्ची वही रिल मकदूब अल ही मलत दौलीन सिरात अल नदीन अन अंत अलीम वही रिल मकदूब अल ही मलत तभी की इच्छा करे अथवा ज्ञान ये बोले अमरा ओने के छुटे चले ची शेइ अभी शब्दो एवं ब्रांडो देर पोथे जानते देखून इष्ट भी बांग्ला है अमादेर आयोजन जादेर पोथे चला जाए ना जानें कैनो इस्लाम मंदो पाठ के निर्बाचन ना करान निर्देश दिए छे जादेर पाठे चला जाए ना आज रात दोष्टाए पापुनो शंप्रचार शकल छाले आठ टाए बांग्लादेशे पीस्टीवी बांग्लाए आकाशे रंग धनु अमरा जीवने बहु बार उपभोग करें थी। लाल नीन शबूज आकाशी बेगुनी होलुद। नाना रंगी शमहार अमरा देखे ची रंग दुन। किंतु जीवने रंग धनु के कोहनु के अमरा विस्तेशन करें देखे ची। अमर जीवनेर उत्थान पोतोन चौड़ाई उत्राई आनंदो बेदना खो भाताशा शंपुर के विस्तारी तो जानार चश्ता करते देखोन जीवने रोंग धनु केवल मत्र पीस टीवी बांग्ला जानून कतु काजो कोरी भावे मुमिन बांदा नीजेर प्रतिटी काज के इस्लामी रोंगे रोंजितो करे जीवने रोंग धुनु प्रति मंगल बार रात दोष्टाए आपुनो शंप्रचार शकल छाड़े आठ टाए बांग्लादेशे पीस टीवी बांग्लाए इस्लामी शरीयत रोये चे शुनिर दिश्तो शुमुहान लोखो उद्देश्य ओनीति मारा। इस्लामी शरीयत उन्हें शरणेर मुद्दीन ही तो रोये चे मानुषेर इहो परोकालिन शांति ओ कुल्लान। अपने के इस्लामी शरीयत शेषोप मुहान लोखो नीति माला ओ कुल्लान कोर दिग्गुलो जानते चं। ताहोले देखून इस्लामी शरीयार लोखो उद्देश्य ओ नीति माला शंक्रंतो आमर आलोचना पीस टीवी बांग्लार पोट्टा है जानून शेही आदोर शुन नीति माला जाम मानोगोतार शब शमशार शमाधन कोरे दिलो इस्लामी शरीयार नीति माला 
কাল রাত সাড়ে নটায় আপন সম্প্রচার সকাল আটটায় বাংলাদেশে পিস টিভি বাংলায় অতি উত্তম অর্থনীতি অর্থনীতি সর্বোৎকৃষ্ট বাণিজ্য নীতি বাণিজ্য নীতি সঠিক লেনদেন বৈধ উপায়ে বড় লাভ ইসলামী অর্থনীতি কত সুন্দর ভাবে নতুন যুগেতে সফলতা অর্জন করেছে জানার জন্য দেখুন ইসলামী অর্থনীতি পরবর্তী অনুষ্ঠান পিস টিভি বাংলায় And, and all of them, therefore, would be dies unto each other? That's right. Dies unto Islam. When you meet a Muslim, you do Islam. Improving him, certain FP doesn't know. When you meet a non-Muslim, you do Dawah, conveying the message of Islam. So it's both together, simultaneously. Well, you, make it, you make it sound so simple and lovely. It is simple. See, we make life difficult for ourselves. We have a misconception that Quran was only revealed for the alims. The Quran says it was revealed for the whole of humankind. Allah says in Surah Qamar, chapter number 54, Muslim 17, 22, 32, 40. We have made the Quran easy for you to understand. Which of you shall not receive admonition? So Allah says the Quran is easy. So if you don't understand Arabic as a language, you read it in the language you understand the best. If you know English, read in English. If you know Maldivian language, read in Maldivian language. And read the translation and whatever you do, you convey, inshallah Allah will help you to get more and more knowledge. You have such a nice way of saying this. Um, sometimes in practice, it's so difficult because there are so many barriers to this happening. Now, there are always people who, who might come and tell us, like, look here, don't do this. You might do it wrong. Don't do this. This is a sharp knife. Don't handle it. What you're saying is, no, go out there and risk it. What I'm saying that before going, if you do a little bit of homework, yes, not that you have to be a scholar, but a person says, okay, only if I have knowledge of maybe a thousand books, I'll start, no. If you have knowledge of one sentence, you go out and spread that sentence. The moment you spread that sentence, Allah gives you a few sentences more, then pages, then books will come. But we feel that first let us memorize maybe 100 books. That's not required. Because Allah is the one to help you. And it is human to err. We human beings should not claim that we know everything. It is human to err. So that is the reason whenever you give a hand, so if you back it up with proof from the Quran or the Sahih Hadith, that is the best. So the difference in me is that I always give references from the Quran. It is not my opinion, it is the opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran or the things of the Prophet. But then sometimes you have these other problems coming in. You know, I mean, in Islam, there are various mazhabs, very, various ways of thinking, various schools of thought, uh, different outlooks on Islam. So um, if you meet a guy around a street corner, one man might belong to one mazhab, another man might belong to this school of thought. How do you deal with those differences? See, we have to follow the mandab of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every Muslim says the Shahada there is no God but Allah and Prophet Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah. In this context, all these great ahimmas that we have, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, Imam Ibn Hanbal, may Allah be pleased with them all. They were great scholars. We love them, we respect them. But all these ahimmas, they said, if you find any of my fatwa which goes against Allah and the truth, throw my fatwa on the wall. So these scholars did not come to divide Islam. They came for people to understand Islam better. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 103, wa bi wa Hold to the rope of Allah strongly and be not divided. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Anam, chapter 6, verse number 159, O Prophet, if anyone divides the religion of Islam, make sex in the religion of Islam, you have nothing to do with him. Allah will look after the faith on the day of judgment. So making sex and dividing Islam is haram. What was the beloved Prophet? What was he? Was he Hanafi? Was he Shafi? Was he Maliki? Was he Salafi? Was he Islami? He was a Muslim. So all these scholars came for people to understand Islam better. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, 59, Atiullah, Atiyah Rasul, obey Allah and obey the Messenger. And all al Amr. Those have been given the knowledge to command. So we have to believe in Allah and the Messenger and the scholars. But the verse does not end, that continues. But if they differ, if these people with knowledge differ, go back to Allah and Rasul. Oh, I see. So most of the scholars, most of these various groups, 95% is the same. 98% is the same. Why do we fight? If we differ in this 2 or 3%, person, when they differ, you go and check with Quran Sahih Hadith, which is more closer, and you follow it. And it is human to her. Therefore, I say what Dr. Zakir Naik says in Islam is zero. 
Don't look at me. Don't follow me. Therefore, I give references. When you ask something, I said, Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 59, says that you will ask your Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. Dr. Zakir Naik doesn't say. What Dr. Zakir Naik says in Islam is zero. And if any of my statements goes against Allah and the Rasul, throw my statement on the floor. And just allow me to ask you, how do you do this? I mean, in this program, I have tried to quote just one verse, and then I get the numbers wrong. And you get it right 100% of the time, this surah, I number this. How do you do this? It is mainly Allah's help. Allah says in Surah Al-Imran, again the verse in the ayah, all the secrets are there in the Quran. Allah says in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 160, if Allah helps you, none can overcome you. If Allah forsakes you, who is there then who can help you? So let the believers put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So first is help of Allah. Then Allah says in the Quran in Surah An-Kabut, chapter 29, verse 69, if you strive in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will open up your pathways. If you do jihad, fi sabilillah. So second is hard work, is striving. If you strive, Allah promises to open up your pathways. If your pathways aren't open, don't blame Allah, blame yourself. That means you haven't strived enough. I see. So if you strive, Allah gives a promise, He will open up your pathways. If you don't get it right, you have to blame yourself, not Allah, because Allah gives a promise. And the last is the technique. So the idea is, have faith in Allah. Keep so trying. Strive. And the third guidance given in the Quran is Surah Anbiya, chapter 21, verse number 7. And Surah Nahal, chapter 16, verse 43. It says, Fas alu hale zikri in kuntum la talamu. If you don't know, ask the person who's knowledgeable. So take the advice from the expert. I see. So but we have training sessions where we train people how to quote from the Qur'an, from the Hadith, but first is Allah's help, then is striving, then is the technique. And if you hear my son, what a beautiful message. 15 years old. What a beautiful message. <laughs> just, just have faith, try hard, and use ask persons, the person who's knowledgeable. ask the experts, ask the expert. keep trying. Um, is that the message you would give to the young population of this young country? Young as well as the old. As well as the old. As the old. And the best example is my son. My son is hardly 15 years old, and tomorrow you'll see him, he'll be giving a talk in Maldives. He can also quote similar, in, out from Quran, from Hadith, from Vedas, Hindu scriptures, from Christian scriptures, Alhamdulillah. And it's possible. How about if, if there are young people in this country, and the old, obviously, who would be interested in either joining your program, or who would want to become independent ties, how, how would they go about it? We have Dawah training programs once a year, where we have thousands of applications, and we select only 25. But we have on the internet, if you go on the IRF website, there is a DTP Dawa training program, okay. which people can log in, it's absolutely free. But doing it practically is something different than doing it on the net. And one good source is the Peace TV. If they watch Peace TV, whatever information they get, they can spread it, whatever portion they remember, and that will help them to go to Jannah, inshallah. Yes, I've, I've been watching Peace TV for the last four and a half to five years, and, and I've seen the tremendous growth. How do you fund it? Many funded by Dumma. I see. The channel belongs to Dumma. It's one of the few channels in the world which is not owned by one particular individual or two or three. I'm just a caretaker. I'm the founder and the caretaker. It's funded by the people from different parts of the world and different groups, mashallah. And it is going stronger and stronger, alhamdulillah. It has the largest viewership in the world today amongst all the Islamic satellite channels. There are approximately more than 60 Arabic channels, three English channels, Islamic, seven Urdu channels, Islamic, few Turkish, etc. About 80 Islamic channels are there, out of which Peace TV has the largest viewership in the world, alhamdulillah. More than 100 million. So, and if there, are, if there are people in this country who are interested in dedicating themselves to the upliftment of the soul, they can always approach you sure. and, and your foundation. Sure, it's my pleasure. And I have a feeling that we're running out of time as well. But um, what I have learned this evening from you is that if we want our souls to be free, to be, to be at peace, then the way is to approach God. And, and to spread the good message of that, we don't need to be religious scholars. All we need is have faith, keep trying, ask the experts, and then life is so easy and it, it becomes so peaceful. That's can I, have I summarized it? Sure, very well, but I, we have to take help of religious scholars yes. so that we can understand Islam better and then spread it in the right way. Exactly. Well, thank you so much. You know, the, the clock keeps ticking. So um, that's probably all we have for, for this evening, all <laughs> time-wise. But then the rest of the evening with us is for us to meditate, perhaps, to think. So thank you once again for having been with us. Ladies and gentlemen, we have run out of time. And therefore, till the next episode, 
Uh, my name is Ibrahim Wahid, as you know. I have with me my brother, Dr. Zakir Naik. Thank you very much for making both of us part of your evening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. सम्पद के सुरक्षित ना रखते सम्पद के ना बृद्धि करते जकत दी निश्चय सम्पद बाढ़ सुरक्षित पवित्र पीस टीभिर थकुनर जकत दान अर्थ पाठाते आई आर एफ आई आल्ट्रायन बैंक क्वाड्रान कोर्ट आठचल्लिस क्यालथर्पे रोड बर्मिंगहम यूके पाउंड अकाउंट नम्बर शून्य एक एक तीन दुई तीन शून्य एक आई बैन जि बि बान एल ओ वाई डि तीन शून्य नय छय तीन चार शून्य एक शून्य दुई चार एक नय दुई शर्ट कोड तीन शून्य 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 आठ तीन सोएफ वि आई सी कोड आई बीओ बी जि बि बस टा पाठिएमेल कर एडमिन एट द रेट पीस टी डट टी पीस टी मानवतार समाधान নিশ্চয় যে আল্লাহর সাথে শিরকে লিপ্ত হয় আল্লাহ তার জন্য জান্নাতকে হারাম করে দেন এবং জাহান নাম অবধারিত করে দেন শহীদুল্লাহ খান মাদানি জান্নাতে যাওয়ার এবং জাহান নাম হতে বাঁচার একটি মাত্র পথ তাওহিদ আল্লাহ সুবহান আল্লাহর তাওহিদ জানার জন্য দেখুন मूल निर्देशन गुलाठान सर्वस्वता बड़िए जीवन और मानवता मुखी हवार पवित्र एवं विशुद्ध जीवन जापन कर কোরআন দিয়েছে কি কি নির্দেশনা জানতে হলে দেখুন কোরআনের ওসিয়ত প্রতি বৃহস্পতিবার সন্ধ্যা সাড়ে ছটায় আপন সম্প্রচার দুপুর সাড়ে বারোটায় বাংলাদেশে পিস টিভি বাংলায় পরিচর্যা ছাড়া কোন জিনিসই তার সৌন্দর্যতা টিকে রাখতে পারে না ঠিক তেমনই ইমান ও আমলের পরিচর্যা ছাড়া একজন মমিনও তার লক্ষ্য উদ্দেশ্যে বুঝতে পারে না শাহিদ আখতার মাদান আসুন রসুল সাল্লাহ আলী সাল্লামের রেখে যাওয়া বাণী শ্রবণের মাধ্যমে নিজের ইমান তাজা করুন এবং রেয়াদুস সালাহিনের দর্শে আমার সাথে থাকুন দেখুন রিয়াজুস সালেহিন কাল সন্ধ্যা ছটায় পুনঃসম্প্রচার দুপুর বারোটায় বাংলাদেশে পিস টিভি বাংলায়